In this series of videos, I'll be covering how to design various types of print in place hinges. I might do an actual project at the end of the series, but for right now we're gonna focus on just different types of joints that you can print on a printer all in one piece. So a print in place hinge is any moving geometry that can be printed all as one piece on a 3D printer, come off the bed and then freely move. Um, that movement can be constrained, it can have supports, but we're gonna start with the most basic type, which is a captive revolution. So basically this is sort of like a key ring, but the center can move around. So I'm gonna start by creating a sketch on the front plane and look at that plane. And I'll be building a revolution. So I'm gonna build this half out and then go from there. So I'm gonna use a center point rectangle, but instead of starting on the origin, I'm gonna start above the origin and drop below the origin. I wanna make sure the center of this here is on the center of, on the center line. I'm gonna set my thickness to be 0.15, nope. D for dimension, 0.15. And I'm gonna set my diameter to be one and a half inches. Actually, um, yeah. 1.5. Divided by two, because it's going to spread in both directions. This represents the overall size and shape of my object. Um, oh, the midpoint thing didn't work. I'm going to see if I can finish it. This. Oh. Let's see, midpoint. There we go. So I put the midpoint of this light on that point there. I'm now going to build the actual joint. And I'm going to do inside this ring. I'm going to draw, start by drawing a single wedge. I want these two pieces to be equal to each other. And this dimension here should be greater than 45. I'm going to do 50. So that when I'm building this up, it should um, have a nice stacking feature. I'm going to then draw a second pair of these lines parallel to the first. These are also going to be equal. And this bottom line is going to be parallel to this line. And the gap between these is going to be our printing tolerance. So I'm going to do 0.02. And what's critical here is that this line is significantly above this point. So this point here is above this, is beyond this point here. Remember, we're gonna, whatever space we do here, we're going to get twice that in slop. So the total gap would be 0.04 if I pull it one direction. And this dimension here, if I dimension from here to here, from this point here, is 0.063. It doesn't matter what that number is, as long as that number is bigger than that number twice. Those that's gray, that's a driven dimension. But if this number is less than this number twice, this ring can fall out. If this is too small, it's not going to sort of serve seal together and not print, um, actually move when it's done. Now I'm going to set my, over, my size. I'm going to dimension from here to this point here. And this is going to set my minimum thickness of my material. And I'm going to do that as 0 0.075. I should now be able to revolve. Or finally, I can take and I tr can trim these pieces out. I'm going to use the scissors. That's under the extend or split. I'm going to remove that line and that line. That did release some constraints, so I'm going to see how things can move. Oh, so I'm going to mention from this outer edge to the center again, 1.5 divided by 2, and that relocked it in place. It's because this line stopped existing when I cut that out. I can now revolve this axis, and I'm going to name it two separate parts, and I'm going to name them. I'm going to need this inner ring. And I'm 
to name this outer ring. Uh, rename. Oh. I guess the inner body. And I'm going to name this a uh, revolving joint. Now, I would do a couple things here. I would put a fillet on this edge here and this edge here to make it look prettier. I'm going to make those 0.15 slash 2. And to help printing, I'm also going to throw a fillet on this edge and this edge. And that's not going to affect the overall printing diameter, but that should help increase the the spacing there. So I can then put text or multiple parts inside of here. I can add a keyring body to this, but this is just the, the proof of concept for this joint. So now I can take and highlight both and I'm going to export. And then I'm going to open those in Prusa Slicer. I'm going to put them in place. And I am going to double check the print setup by looking at the bottom ring. I have plenty of clearance there. The first line is always a little thicker because that's the elephant footing. Basically, it's usually a little wide. And I'm going to print this, check this out. And it looks like I have plenty of clearance the whole time through. So that should come out of it. If I want it a little tighter, I could reduce that dimension. But if I get too tight, they'll stick together and it won't print properly. So that is a revolving joint.